Hi, we're on to the second to last unit, maybe, I don't know. Um, and it's about assets and bases. So last week we finished solutions. Uh, this week we continue with some new stuff, assets and bases, and actually uh, we're gonna mix some old and some new uh, this week. Um, and we're gonna start by reviewing how to name assets and bases. And this we've actually done before. Um, so this is uh, the review part. And to name acids, you want to first be able to identify them on paper. And you might remember that acids have an H in their formula. And you might also remember that H stands for hydrogen. Hope that you did. And then bases have an OH in their formula. And that stands for hydroxide. Um, we'll learn later that this is not always the case, but this is a really good way to identify acids and bases on paper, um, is that acids have an H or hydrogen, bases have an OH in their formula. Um, so as an example, maybe you've heard of HCl, we call that hydrochloric acid. And Here's a base. It's called barium hydroxide. So, this is examples of acids and bases. And, um, you know, for naming, um, there are some rules. Maybe you still have the blue sheet from first semester, or maybe it was purple, don't remember. Um, but there is uh, basically um, a couple of rules to name acids and bases. For acids, if the old name ends in IDE, then that's gets the hydro prefix and the ic suffix. Like the one above, hydrochloric acid. And then if it ends in ATE, the old name, the way that you should know how to name, um, then that would be just no hydro, just blank ic acid. And finally, the last one possibility was ITE. If it ended in ITE, then you would call it blank OUS acid. And I'm realizing that this should not be there. So that's how you name them. And uh, for bases, it was really straightforward. You just named them regular. So it's going to be something hydroxide. Now, this week you'll have some. Um, to practice, but I've got a handful here we can do, um, and just to refresh your memory. So uh, we'll just do like five of each, maybe. So the first one, um, when you name them, the way that you identify them first, oh, you say, oh, this is an acid, it has an H in it, so it's going to be an acid. And then if you want to name it, you have to figure out what this part is called. They're all going to have hydrogen, so you can kind of ignore that. But this is called sulfate, A-T-E. And so it ends in A-T-E, so it becomes sulfuric acid. Or number two. Um, You've got, again, you can ignore the H, but you have this NO3 that's called nitrate. Eight becomes ic, so this is called nitric acid. Um, if they're off the periodic table, like let's say this, if you're gonna name that, you would call it hydrogen bromide. Remember, when it's off the periodic table, you give it the IDE ending. So this would be hydrogen bromide old name and then it ends in IDE up here, so you call it hydrobromic acid. Let's see. Um, I think there's a two there. So this 
H2SO3 is called hydrogen, which we, we know, sulfite, I-T-E. So this becomes sul, oopsies, how do you spell? Sulfurous acid, okay? It was I-T-E and it becomes O-U-S acid. And then the bases, they're really straightforward. If it just says like, like the rule up here, something hydroxide, well, here's a hydroxide. You can identify this as a base because it has an OH instead of all these that have H's. And you just name it regular, so sodium hydroxide. If you want to write the formulas, that's a little trickier. You kind of have to work backwards and use your periodic table um, and then crisscross to do it. So we'll start with this one. So perchloric acid, you're looking for, well, it ends in IC. So then you go like, okay, well, it ends in IC and there's no hydro. So it's this one. So I'm looking for perchlorate. So you go on your periodic table you find perchlorate right here, um, somewhere in this neighborhood, perchlorate, and it's ClO4, it's got a minus one charge. So then you say, oh, okay, well, it's an acid, so it's gonna get crisscrossed with an H, H is plus one, ClO4 is minus one, and they just cancel out, so the formula for perchloric acid is HClO4. Or two, let's just say it was um, nitrous acid. Okay, the same sort of thing. You know it's an acid, so it's going to have H, obviously because it says the word acid, and then O-U-S, so you work backwards. O-U-S was I-T-E, so you're not looking for nitrous, you're looking for nitrite to crisscross it with. So on your sheet, you find nitrites um, right there. It's NO2, it's got a minus one charge. And they'll cancel out, so you get H N O two for nitrous acid. And we'll try one more. How about hydro I O D I C hydroiodic acid? Well, has the hydro prefix in it, so it must be uh, must have ended in I D E. So I'm not looking for iodic. I'm looking for iodide, which is off the periodic, periodic table. So you'd have H plus 1 and iodine minus 1, and they cancel out, so you get HI for hydroiodic acid. I should probably do some more. They don't always cancel out. Um, like, let's say it was phosphoric acid. For phosphoric acid, again, you're going to crisscross. It ends in IC. It has to have a hydrogen because it's an acid. Phosphoric, right here, was phosphate. So you go look on your sheet for phosphate. This is phosphide, right? Because it's off the periodic table. So you're looking for phosphate on the back. And it has a negative three charges, PO4 minus three. So they cancel, well, they don't cancel out, obviously. So you get H3PO4 when you crisscross them. Finally, um, if it says hydroxide in it, like let's say it's um, um, calcium hydroxide, there's no, you don't need to consult this part, you just need to remember, oh, calcium is plus two, and you're always going to have hydroxide, so it's a base, there's no hydrogen here, because it says hydroxide instead of the word acid, and hydroxide is minus one, and then when you crisscross them, you get calcium, which two, calcium hydroxide. So here's a good review of um, how to name acids and bases. And maybe you still have your sheet from last semester. You can look through that as well. And there'll be some practice too. If you want to do that before you take the rest of the notes, you should stop here. And um, we'll come back for the second half of the notes. OK, for the second half uh, here, we've got um, kind of, you know, more of what are an acid base. Maybe you're familiar with the words, um, but you're not quite familiar with what they actually are, what they do. Obviously, we'll learn a lot of that this unit, but um, it's nice to remember how to write their names and form or yeah, read them and write their formulas first. Um, so uh, let's switch to what they are and what they do. First of all, on paper, you already know that you can identify an acid by um, having an H in the formula. 
And what we mean when we say it has an H in the formula is that when it breaks apart, like let's say something like HCl, um, when you put that in water, it breaks apart into H plus Cl minus. And having this in water is what makes an acid an acid. So it's easier to say, yeah, oh, if it has an H in the formula, it's going to do this. And then that's what an acid is. So having the H plus that's what makes an acid an acid. This has some other names and other forms. Usually it's called um, either the hydrogen ion or hydronium. Oopsies, how do you write words? I-O-N. And um, sometimes it's written as H3O+, plus, but they all mean the same thing. All of that is that what makes an acid an acid. So have the H in the formula. Bases, on the other hand, have the OH in the formula. Like, let's say, sodium hydroxide. And when you put that in water, it breaks apart into whatever the first thing is, in this case, sodium, and then the OH minus. Okay, This is what makes a base a base. And obviously, since it has the word in there, this is called the hydroxide ion. So acids have an H plus, hydrogen or hydronium ion, um, or sometimes H3O plus written that way, it means the exact same thing. And then bases have the OH minus um, or the hydroxide ion. That's how you can identify them on paper. That's what they do when you put them in water. This is what makes an acid, that's what makes a base. Each solution has some combination of both of these, um, but if you have more of this, you're an acid. If you have more of this, you're a base, um, which we'll come back to later. Uh, around the house, you can identify acids and bases pretty easily. You probably interact with them every day. Uh, acids tend to be things that you eat or drink. So if something, um, you know, maybe you obviously probably know like lemon juice is an acid um, or uh, orange juice is an acid. Most of the things that you drink are acidic in some way, even if you buy them at the store, um, whether it's Gatorade, soda, all those things would be acidic. Um, usually they add vitamin C to it. Vitamin C is called ascorbic acid, and that is... Um, one thing that makes them acidic, but for sodas and stuff, they um, dissolve carbon dioxide in the water and that makes carbonic acid and that's what makes sodas acidic as well. So most things that you eat or drink, even if you don't think they're acidic, they're slightly acidic, even something like milk, which is fairly benign, like it's not obviously going to destroy your insides, it's still slightly acidic. So uh, foods and drinks, things to be um, usually acidic, and then bases. They tend to be like household cleaners. Um, like things like bleach, Drano, um, anything with ammonia in it. That's not how you spell ammonia. I don't know why. Oh, here, we'll just make it like an exclamation point. Anyway, so these things would be... Um, basic ammonia is in like all 409 like type cleaners like countertop cleaners anything with bleach if you're using like uh, bleach wipes these days um, that would be basic um, these things react with oils to um, turn them into soaps and that is uh, why they're useful for like oily countertops and things some of their properties you can make like a fun table they're essentially chemical opposites so a lot of the properties are opposites. So um, for example, for taste, you probably know that acids taste sour, bases taste bitter. Um, for touch, if you ever had like orange juice or lemon juice evaporate on your hands, you know that it is sticky for acids and for bases they're slippery. Slippery because um, when you put a base on your fingertips uh, it, or any part of your skin, it's going to turn, convert the oils on your skin into soaps, and so that's why they feel slippery. We also know that in water, 
from the bot from the above uh, for these nodes that acids will produce H plus. Bases produce OH minus. Um, one thing we'll get to later on is what an indicator is. Um, some labs that you know we're still hoping we can come back and do. Uh, one indicator that maybe you've used before is called litmus paper. Litmus paper is um, an indicator that changes color in the presence of an acid or a base. Um, for a litmus paper, if it turns pink, it's an acid. And if it turns blue, it's a base. Maybe you've heard the term litmus test. Um, and this is where it comes from. Litmus paper changes color based on whether something is an acid or a base. And then another, chemically, um, acids will react with a lot of metals. You've seen that before. We've done some labs um, where we've taken like magnesium, for example, or zinc and put them into an acid and watch them bubble. And then uh, bases don't. So there is a list of some other properties on paper and some of the properties that you could see um, where you can find acids and bases around the house. And finally, what they do when you put them in water, what makes an acid an acid and a base a base chemically. Okay, bye.